Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Let's talk about long legs. This was a horror movie I did not know anything about. I know, a, I think what made me just watch it was a quick line or two, something about an FBI agent and cultist. And I figured, oh, you know what? I'm going to watch this movie. I was in the mood for a horror. I hope this all sounds right. My computer is shut down on me. I'm doing a new setup again. But this is directed by Osgood Perkins, who I've never heard of. No, I don't think I have heard of him. Uh, stars Micah Monroe, Nicolas Cage, Blair Underwood, Alicia, Hill, Alicia Witt. By the way, Blair Underwood, haven't seen him since the 80s, I think it feels like. And good for him. He was good in this fucking movie. All right, so I might have to get into a little bit of spoilers or plot here and there, but I'll try not to for the most part. But uh, like I said, I didn't know nothing going into this movie. Never even seen the poster, trailer, nothing. And I, got, I liked the movie. Uh, I borderline on liking it a lot. However, there's a couple of things that I guess stopped me from just gushing over this movie and giving it a, a lot of praise. And maybe people will do that. I could see this movie being really loved by a lot of uh, horror fans. Um, you know, it's a horror thriller suspense. It's a somewhat slow burn. And one of my nitpicks is it's deliberate. So again, these are creative things you do. You're making a movie, I, I somewhat guess, I understand. But when you purposely leave things out and kind of fill it in here and there, it can really work. But I felt that this movie did so many things so many type of uh, elements that it needed to be a little more straightforward with certain aspects of the movie. I'm glad it wasn't a blow your eardrums, uh, noise, let's su surprise, scare somebody. I'm getting tired of that. And um, one thing that kind of threw me off in the beginning is when it starts, it shows part of the lyrics to a song. And as I recognized the song, it kind of threw me off to like what the movie would be. Because again, I didn't know much about this. I didn't know if it was going to be a real serious movie um, or a little bit more, you know, other elements in the movie little comedy whatever but when i heard when i saw the lyrics and it went in my head and i went wow i know that song bang a gun and i'm like wait how do you? and then it just didn't fit for me but it pays off to a certain extent and really don't have that much bad things to say about it except for the i guess you can call it editing type um story plot line and how they're going about keeping the story moving forward, you know, revelations, like what's going on, who is this person, um, how do they connect to things, and as it grows, and it does give you the feels, I think it hits the right things at the right time for the most part, so you are feeling a little confused, you are feeling a little anxiety, um, stress, like what's going on, great performances all around, um, again, you got to give um, Blair Underwood credit. I don't know. I recognize the voice, but I thought it was the guy at first from, I don't know, Star Wars. Uh, he plays like a new general type guy. I thought a Mandalorian took the fucking blade away. Got his ass kicked in the end, but in any case, it wasn't. It was Blair Underwood, and I was actually very happy. Um, insane performances, and... Uh, in that itself creates a little bit of, I don't know, it, it kind of pulls me out here and there. You've got a over the top, exaggerated type villain who is super connected in ways. And if you're not gonna go a certain way, 
and this is what I mean about plot and uh, revealing things, if you're going to go a serial killer, plain and simple, no matter what he believes or what he, you know, writes in letters or whatever he, clues he leaves behind, it's, it's one thing to approach it and get to this movie and understand, well, all right, so this guy was capable of so-and-so. However, if you're going to add the supernatural element, especially when you're hinting at cults and stuff, which wasn't too overly done in the beginning, it was more put to the middle to the end of the movie, because it starts like a procedural um, investigative type. Uh, I, I got the feeling she was like a Fox Mulder FBI agent, you know, gifted. And it's shown immediately in the uh, movie that i don't know partner i don't think he was like chief of police or anything but blair underwood's character is um he's he's aware of her i don't know gifts let's say um i guess he's a supervisor or something and he's going but again a movie like this leaves things out and then he reveals somewhere in the movie that he looked into her file, and there's a major clue involved in the, um, care, uh, well, was, I think, uh, Micah Monroe, Lee Harker, um, she's, she's very, you know, quirky in a lot of ways, subdued, and in her own mind, you can tell she's already troubled, they give her this, pretty good arc in a sense and Blair Underwood's noticing right off the bat um well there's a major reveal at the beginning she's like oh the killer's in that fucking house let's call for backup and the partner's like what the fuck are you talking about and well spoiler the partner gets fucking shot at the door and she has to take down this killer or whatever and the breathing was a little annoying but I get it and um, they use it throughout the movie to subtly indicate um lee hawker's state of mind you know and she has a, a breathing thing she does and again some impressive performances i was surprised i liked it so much i just don't know if it's um this might be rewatchability needed factor in a sense where it doesn't have the ending of a lot of movies will give you like five fucking endings. Oh, it was this, twist, it's that, twist, it's this, it's that. This has got a little bit of it, but it's more laid out and not so surprising where you think the creators of this movie are just trying to dick you around. But it's got an element to that, and I was okay with it. Okay with the mostly the progression, but there were parts of this movie that you know, it it brings it down to a point where I will like a slow burning, you know, I don't have to have gore and jump scares every five minutes to be involved. And but there are a couple of times I was pulled out of the movie, whether it was one thing or another. And as you get to the parts of the movie, because they're parts, part one, part two, part three, uh, I just had to, I, but at the third one, I ignored the, what it actually said um they they bring it together towards the end of the second and beginning of the third act and you're just kind of wondering where it's going because through the progression of the story in the movie um there's an element of lee hawker calling her mom and then the agent brings up the mom at some point and my brain went oh it's all the moms a part of this um, crime thing. And the reason why I call it that is when you got the main villain involved, it's repeatedly said by probably Harker most, but that he had to have had alien, uh, allies. He had to have help in what he was doing because of the way the evidence was laid out. And like I said, Lee Harker's got a talent for this. And she breaks things down, looks at stuff, and, you know, 
one of those, uh, you know, box molder like minds, and you could figure things out. And it's really interesting, and it really uh, pulled me into the story. And they get to a point where it's going to be revealed what is at the heart of her issues, let's call them, because it is, like I said, you know, calling the mom. Um, the killer just finds her and, like, starts leaving clues, and then the agent, Blair Underwood, gets, catches on to it. So the... It is building up, and it's building up in a pretty good way. I'm going to give the movie credit. Again, um, I was just in the mood for a horror movie, a, one just like this, a slow burn, and I definitely recommend it. I'm giving it praise, but I'm trying to highlight some of the things that may have been creative choices that people will really enjoy that just don't sit well with me, and it's not to say that it's a bad movie. And But when I talk about these things... It's easy to just come on and say, oh, this movie's the bomb. Oh, it's fucking, I totally recommend this be three minutes. But again, I'm getting into the second and third act. I'm waiting for all this to come together. And you've arrested the main villain, let's say. And this is where they would throw 80 twists at you and give you tons of things. And it kind of goes in a way... A little unexpected, but you go, whoa, what would be the reason for this? And I enjoyed the um, revelation because, again, the performances are pretty good in this movie. And it's uh, and it's not too much shock. And although the thumbnail, but this is Lee Hawker, like with a hand over her mouth, shock. Because there are revelations and they do investigate crime scenes. And things happen suddenly, but seemingly no reason. Like I said, going to the second and third act, I kind of went with the mom thing, and it was kind of revealed what the connection was. But I was really surprised by that they actually went with a spoiler, a, a definite supernatural arc, where it's not totally out of the blue, and it's not one of those, oh, let's fuck with the viewer. And like, I get mad at certain things like Fight Club and bullshit, like, you know, where they do trickery. Oh, the Sixth Sense might have done it a little better. And it's laid out through the movie, but I was kind of surprised. I found myself smiling a little bit like, okay, so you do have a fucking psycho serial killer. But who is he really? What is his purpose? And is he just... Okay, so one of the main things of the movie is, is this killer a charismatic fucking guy who just knows how to manipulate people? Because it could be that devious, that simple of a everyday normal guy for the most part, and he's fucking evil, and he's convinced these women to do things. And one of the first things that comes to mind is, I used to watch Smallville a lot, and the actress who played Chloe, it's Chloe, whatever, fucking Chloe, in real life became part of a cult and was like grooming children or young, I don't know, I don't want to. Anyway, she got convicted of a fucking major crimes. And it just had to do with like how charismatic the leader of this cult was. And, you know, what, what is he doing? I also think of Red State, which is a great movie. If I think I said that right. Um... So are you going with a really basic human who's just that skilled and that charismatic and that manipulative that he can have a cult brainwashed for the most part? Or do you have a fucking clown overboard nut job played by Nicolas Cage who is fucking out of his mind but almost delusional with the power he has and it's connected in a sense to a supernatural aspect that is really laid out in the beginning for you and it kind of made the movie a little bit more enjoyable again two parts two aspects of this movie kind of drew me out and made my brain overthink or get a little detached from 
what I was supposed to be doing, which was really getting invested in uh, Hawker's story, um, the connection with her mom and Blair Underwood's uh, performance. It's all, you know, right there. And again, I think this is going to be something that over time will gain probably a lot of critical praise. I applaud it for what it tried to do, what it accomplished, uh, cinematography, certain aspects are shot in a way that can make you feel something. You don't get that much. There are rare moments in like certain movies like um, Paranormal Activity and you realize how they became so popular and good and certain things they do are spot on. But then there's seven movies made and it loses its whatever, you know, its thunder. I can see that happening with this, with a somewhat continuation. It is basically over at the end, but you can definitely see aspects of this that can definitely continue on. And I think one of the reasons why it's set in the 90s is for that reason. You can still play with what was the past? Because at first I was like, wait, they're giving this actress's birthday away. You know, her, her the character she's playing in the movie. And I'm like, wait, wouldn't she be whatever? But, you know, my brain readjusted and realized, no, it's kind of set in the 90s. But it goes, it has flashbacks. Again, that's maybe one of the aspects that I thought was a little underwhelming was how you want to give a little bit of information and show things and it's, and it's done in the beginning it's a little eh, you know it's not really something that's going to bring the movie down it's it's definitely not but i can see certain type of people just really either turning away from it uh you know it's, it's just one of those movies it has that quality to it and i think all good movies will have that it's something that signals maybe that it's not meant for everybody that someone had a vision it's his you know idea of a you know you can call it a new franchise if you want but something that hints at things and keeps the it keeps the the um some of the tropes that are pretty good or aspects of horror movies that I like and amps it up to a level that lets you get invested in the main character, even, even the supporting character. And the mom, Alicia Witt. I, I, you know, I don't know if I'm going to give Nicolas Cage that much praise because the, the, the character's all over the place and he, does, he doesn't make sense. And it's a little overboard for what I thought they were going for. But it works. It, it it's not um. And, you know, it's it's not gonna lower the movie's aspect in a, in the long run. Again, I think this is something I would watch again. I wanna, you know, get into it, and I think that's a sign of another. I mean, it's another sign of a good movie. I think this will gain some praise. Like I said, it's got a. It's got a unique signature to it. And maybe that's because of this director who I don't really know. Osgood Perkins. There's not much on him, I don't think. Let me check. Yeah. Uh, 2010, I don't know. 2002, the Black Coats do all that. He's directing. He's been writing, it looks like, since 2010. Uh, I don't know if I even know one of his... Uh, I think I've watched Gretel and Hansel. And it looks like the Monkey, the Monkey's coming out. And it looks like it's going to be a remake or, you know, a book adaption from Stephen King. So I'm going to give credit to this director. Um, he, he, he won me over with the movie. Like, I'm impressed at certain aspects. It's a couple of little drawbacks. And is that that's going to be anything. I do like the aspect that it's not made for everybody in that way. And you can 
give credit for someone's love or their passion for a project and where they're putting their effort in. I think he succeeds. They they succeed. It's a it's an effort, right? I mean, collective everybody. Again, I was surprised at how much I like Blair Underwood in this, Alicia Witt. I mean, the main character just pulls you in from the beginning. I'll give her that. And but when you've got Nicolas Cage just hamming it up like fucking nothing, it's just it's a little weird. But when you cut back to how you you, know, you pulled in, it's it's definitely um definitely thought provoking in that sense. Uh, some unique aspects of the movie, but it pulls back. It harkens to old horror, and especially when you're dealing with like dolls in that sense or a uh, doll maker. You know, we can even go to Chucky with that, right? I mean, what did he do? Like Rudo puts himself in a doll. Now the new ones, the the fucking computer thing, which was I kind of liked it, but it, it doesn't have the same feel. So I'm gonna give Long Legs a recommendation. I was, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. It borderlines on great for me, <laughs> um, but I could see people going, "You're crazy!" You know, this doesn't make sense. And again, I would just blame maybe some of the editing techniques and the deliberate aspect of just giving you a little bit of information. Showing a little bit of the insanity, but the truth peeking through. Uh, does that line mean anything? Does the song verse mean anything? Do the part, labeled parts mean anything? And I get what they were going for. I totally see the promise of uh, maybe this director and give me an idea to watch Monkeys when it comes out or actually go back and look at some of the other things he... Uh, Oh, so he acted too, right? Is this it? He acted? Yeah, I guess he did act. Well, he's been acting since, you know, maybe I know the fucking guy, like you know him. He could be one of those guys you watch and you see him and you go, oh shit. He's been in a lot of stuff. Let's see, uh, Psycho 2, Six Degrees. They played a young Norman Bates. Hmm. Both Legally Blonde, Not Another Teen Movie Secretary, uh, Star Trek, 2009. All right, uh, well, he acted in Nope. And then he's acting in Monkey Television. You know, again, I, I wish I knew more about him. Like I said, he came out of nowhere for me. The whole movie came out of nowhere. And once I just read that little blurb, like FBI agent investigates a cold, blah, blah, blah. And I was really surprised when they start bringing in, like, you know, she has obvious gifts. And um, I like that the Asian supervisor, Blair Underwood, catches on. And it's kind of why he starts watching over her. And like, there's one, one part of the movie is like, uh, like, let's have a drink. It's obviously late. And they make a point later to highlight that. But he's like, oh, let's have a drink. He's like, I don't drink. He goes, okay, I'll drink and I'll listen to you. Just, you know, and it was, I think, a good way of showing that the way her mind works and the way she views all these things is really important for FBI investigators. Like, they look for that. And again, that's why I think I compare it to, maybe not realistically, to Fox Mulder from X-Files. But when it's first introduced, Scully is knows about him because he's great at um reading people and criminals and he doesn't have the clear point well maybe he does like season seven or eight he gets some alien power or whatever but it just had that feel like you know a special agent uh, but again without revealing and doing too much spoiler the reveal of her connection to everything and, and this killer Who's, by the way, they did mention he's arrested by the second and third act of the movie. And you're kind of wondering what's going to happen next. I was waiting for, like, Satan worshippers to rip through the fucking, you know, police station and, like, free him or something. But it is that of Satan, you know, Hail Satan type shit. Um, done really well in the movie, though. It's, it doesn't beat you over the head too much. It's... Uh, a story you're involved in Lee Harker again that actress uh, kudos to her um, I don't know her too much from things 
Although, should I? I don't know. Uh, it follows. I know that. Yeah. Again, uh, a, a total recommendation, a hesitation in gushing and um, calling it great or... I'm going to have to watch it again, and that's a testament to, I think, how good the movie is. Uh, I want to watch it again. I want to... It had so many good moments and quiet things and things that can creep you out in a good way, and you don't really notice while you're feeling a certain way. It's got a good... Uh, um, got good elements in it. Just maybe not gushing over it because of how it's all tied together. But um, this is something I'm definitely going to watch again. I just, I know it. I think about the, um, the legacy of a movie like this too. And like, I'm not a fan of the Saw movies. And there's like fucking 10 of those fuckers. And again, it's also a little fuckery because maybe I should do a podcast on the Saw movies as a whole. So, the first Saw movie, as soon as, you know, my brain's working, I'm, you know, it's okay, it's a fucking, you know, go upon type fucking movie, okay, tribes cut off your fuck. But there's a point in the movie at the end where, spoilers for the fucking Saw 1, but Jigsaw gets off the fuck, he's been in the bathroom the whole time, and I went, fuck you, fuck you, just like I did in Fight Club when they reveal that bullshit, god-awful fucking, oh, the same person shit, fuck off, it just doesn't work with me, and, um, yeah, I don't know how I was connecting this to fucking long legs, oh, but the legacy of what it carries over, um, you could do many type of continuations, prequels, um, spin-offs from something like this. But I hope he doesn't lose his talent for doing this type of movie and we continue himself. I'm totally happy with being a one-off movie. So, uh, that's awesome. I mean, again, I'm going to watch it again. But my brain just tells me, like, there's certain people I wouldn't recommend it to. <laughs> you know, like, again, that might just be the sign of a good movie that really is going to appeal to a certain passionate group that really is in the mood for a horror movie. You know, I'm not going to compare it to, but it gives you the sense of seven. Um, what's in the box? And that's a end joke with me because I still love watching Collider when it was fucking decent. And they had a show and they had a part of the uh, show. You know, it's like a panel show, fucking Collider back in the day, doing reviews. And they did, it was a horror one. And at one point, there was a segment on the show and they go, What's in the box? Um, but this gives me seven feels. Um, and I love that movie. Um, you don't have the breakout star power in this that that had, obviously, but I'm going to give it that much credit in comparing it that there's talent here, there's um, talent behind the camera, uh, the music, maybe a tiny bit forgetful, but like I said, tying into lyrics that kind of threw me off. You know, I was thinking of Bang a Gong, <laughs> if that's even the name of the song. Um... You know, my girl, my girl, I mean, it's, but it definitely didn't annoy me. It's not like a lot of movies, it's jump scare and bangs. I like subtlety and jump scares can work every once in a while if they're done right and at a certain pace, put in the right places. I think this has elements of a great movie that might over time become one of my favorite, uh, you know, horror thriller movies. And I think it's something that uh, people would like to watch if they're into that stuff. This is, I could definitely see this becoming a cult classic for people. Really enjoy it. Um, it's the layers it puts in, the, the feel, the atmosphere it's, you know, putting out that actually makes you feel things. It's hard. Like, 
as an atheist, as someone who doesn't believe in certain things, I love like what was it maybe two of the paranormal activity movies, and I don't believe in this shit. Ghost of fucking bullshit. But make a good movie, give me an interesting angle, and I'm in. So this movie works for me on almost every level. Couple of minor distractions, like you know, okay. It's not the most perfect movie, but performance wise, camera, element, the feel of everything, it works. And I think it's a rare thing nowadays. I think I watched a sci fi movie. Oh, I fucking wish I could remember the name. I should remember the name because it's like the only fucking video I did that the makers of the movie responded to my review. <laughs> Oh shit, I should fucking really remember that. I think it was called Space or something like that. And it was a low budget sci fi movie based on a couple of guys looking at UFOs and stuff. And it, it worked on so many levels for me. I loved it. And this has that feel to it. I'm not saying this is a low budget movie. And maybe it is, even when I open my wikis. I, I really don't look that far and go into. Um, so let me take a quick look. Uh, Grossed 103.5 million, critically acclaimed. You see, I don't even look at those things when I do my podcast, for the most part. Um, production. Oh, great. You get to see, hear me do this live. Uh, uh, and it's funny because it says marketing neon, I guess, the people who make the movie. Uh, utilize guerrilla marketing tactics similar to that to the box office success of Blair Witch Project. And by the way, I didn't see none of that. None of it. Don't never saw a picture, trailer, nothing until I decided to watch the movie uh, on a sentence I read. So, kudos. You could have done all the marketing you wanted. You didn't need it. As soon as I, I'm into this type of you know, horror, thriller, suspense, um, get you in the feels type movie. Yeah. I was definitely uh, hooked. I didn't need to be brought in. And again, maybe that even gives more credence to how good the movie actually is. That uh, you got the balls to put up money. You know, again, it's I can't find real quick how much the movie cost. Uh, Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm fucking spacing out here, but I'm trying to look and talk at the same time, which is kind of fucking hard. Just go watch Spiral with fucking Chris Rock in that fucking movie. Anyway, um, yeah, I thought I'd catch you how much it made. I mean, I know how much it made, 103 all together. And I guess that's a success, so, like the first Saw movie, what was it, like $1 million it was made for? It grossed like $100 million. So I hope this is a success. I hope people enjoy it as much as I did. And it's not one of those seven twists at the end, go go fuck yourself, bullshit, you know, trailer bait, you know, sequel bait type thing. And those elements might be in here, but they're done better. It's just, God, like when I talk about TV shows like Star Wars and stuff, right like, I could disagree what you're putting out there, but write it well, and I'll, I'll, I'll praise it for what it is. But this happens to be in my wheelhouse. I uh, loved it. Horror, story, you know, casting, again, camera work, the building of elements, uh, making you feel a certain way. So I'm giving this a thumbs up. I really enjoyed it. I'm actually looking forward to watching this again. So maybe that's praise enough. In any case, watch Long Legs. It is a suspense, horror, thriller. It's got a little bit of, not, I wouldn't say in your face, Gore, like Saw, where they meet, you know, you see the things actually happening, although there are a couple <laughs> unexpected type gun things, maybe, but it's, you know, going to a crime scene and kind of the cult horror, you know, aspects that are done really well. But I recommend it without a doubt. Interested in watching it again. It's got a, a lot of things going for it. 
might not be for everybody but i hope it gains enough um again just from glancing at wiki it said it has critical acclaim so i'm happy for that and i'd like to see more from this guy but that might have happened with other movies i've watched again i'm, I'm thinking about Saw and how it pissed me off and every time i tried to get back in because there were things i like about it and it just kept fucking with me and well, you know i'm gonna I'm, you know what i might do a saw fucking podcast i'll just go through like all of them real quick anyway i hope everybody's doing well this was the my thoughts on long legs a horror suspense thriller totally recommend it and i hope everybody's doing well and my best to you and yours take care